We turn now to the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, South Carolina's senior senator, Lindsey Graham. Senator, good to have you here in studio. Thank you. Uh, we just heard about this tragic shooting. It was an AR-15 style semi-automatic weapon. Hate crimes seem to be on the rise right. in this country. What do we need to do to combat this, prevent it? Well, I think uh, somebody interdicted the shooter, thank God, and it could have been worse. But uh, and I think in California, you can't buy a gun until you're 21. So let's find out how this guy got the gun, what his motives were. And uh, I'm a big supporter of protective orders, allowing local law enforcement to go to a judge if there's ample evidence somebody's becoming a danger to themselves or others. About 15 states have such laws. I'm trying to get a national grant program to incentivize states to pass laws, to allow local law enforcement to go to judges, to take guns out of hands of people that are showing really disturbing signs or dangerous signs. And I think in Parkland, that would have made a big difference here. I don't know. Well, we'll continue to follow the details as we learn more about what happened there. Um, but I want to talk about what you are preparing for this week. Right. Attorney General Barr will be answering questions for the first time really in detail about the Mueller report. I know you said you're done with it. Mm -hmm, pretty much. But what is it that you're going to try to focus in on with this hearing? Well, he gave a four-page summary. Does the report support a summary? Does the report actually indicate there was no collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians? I think the idea that this president obstructed justice is absurd. He turned over a million documents to the special counsel. Almost everybody around him testified. I can't think of one thing that President Trump did to stop Mueller from doing his job. He never claimed executive privilege. From my point of view, uh, I've heard all I need to really know. Now I want to look at and find out how all this happened. But on that point of attempting to obstruct justice mm -hmm. or not, the president seems to want to continue to litigate this because he came out this week and <laughs> yeah. said uh, and denied that he had ever thought or told anyone to fire Don yeah, McGahn, right. the White House counsel. Right. But that directly contradicts sworn testimony that yeah, was yeah. in the Mueller report where Don McGahn said he almost quit. Yeah. He was so pressured to fire the special counsel. Well, Who do you believe? I, I think it's just all theater. It doesn't matter. I don't care what he said to Don McGahn. It's what he did. <clears throat> the president never obstructed. It doesn't matter to you that oh, the president God, no. is I changing mean, if, a version uh, of events or perhaps gonna, some would say lying. If, if you're going to look at every president who pops off at a staff and, you know, ask him to do something that's maybe crazy, then we won't have many presidents. But in terms of the firing, this was Don McGahn, the White House counsel, being pressured to fire the special counsel. But he didn't. I don't care, but, I don't care what they talked about. He didn't do anything. The point is the president did not impede Mueller from doing his investigation. And it doesn't trouble closed. you that the president is changing his version of events. I don't, I don't care what happened between him and Don McGahn. Here's what I care about. Did Mueller, was a Mueller allowed to do his job? And the answer is yes. Name one thing that they did to stop Mueller from doing his job. And if you can't, then there's no obstruction. Will you call him again to testify? Uh, n not me? No, no, I'm, I'm done. What about the special counsel? I'm not going to relitigate it. I don't know how clear I can be, Margaret. It's over for me. He didn't collude with the Russians. Obstruction of justice in this situation is absurd. I fought hard as hell to make sure Mueller could do his job, introduce legislation to make sure he couldn't be fired. Uh, it's over. But in terms of this report, it was not just the obstruction of justice that you seem to be saying you're over. All the details in here about Russia and what they tried to do, what they did succeed at doing in terms That's of accessing computer systems. Isn't that worth a, a conversation? I mean, Senator Marco Rubio came out and said this week, he went as far as to say that they had the ability, they were in a position to alter Florida voter rolls back in 2016. I think that's, that's the point. There's two things I'm going to look at. Uh, what did they do, and are they trying to do it again, and how do we stop them? I think that's something we all need to focus on. And uh, how did this start? How Is the president focused on that enough? On that? Yeah, he's got a good doing team it around again. Him. Yeah, no, he's got a good team around him to make sure we harden our infrastructure. But what Marco said was a bit stunning. I've never heard that before. So what I want to do is make sure that Intel and Judiciary and Homeland Security, that the three committees are working together to harden the infrastructure against Russia or anybody else 
interfering in 2020, and Russia's still up to it. So the takeaway for me is that they were very involved in the 2016 election. They're coming at us again. I'd like to stop them. And one way to stop them is to make them pay a price. You're talking about this with a level of seriousness that we did not hear uh, from Jared Kushner, uh, senior advisor to the president. I want to play for you some sound um, when he was speaking this week about uh, the Russia probe when he said it was actually more damaging to have the Mueller investigation. Listen to what he said. Quite frankly, the whole thing's just a big distraction for the country. And you look at, you know, what Russia did, you know, buying some Facebook ads to try to sow dissent and do it, and it's a terrible thing. But uh, I think the investigations and, and all of the, the speculation that's happened for the last two years has had a much uh, harsher impact on our democracy than a couple of Facebook ads. Now, if you look at the magnitude of what they did and what they accomplished, I think the ensuing investigations have been way more harmful to our well, country. I mean, is he minimizing the threat to national security? Well, I like Jared a lot, but he's leaving out a big detail. The Russians hacked into John Podesta's emails, the campaign manager for the Democratic candidate for president. The Russians hacked into Hillary Clinton's emails, the candidate for the Democratic Party. Can you imagine what we would be saying if the Russians or the Iranians hacked into the presidential team of the Republican Party? So, no, this is a big deal. It's not just a few Facebook ads. They were very successful in pitting one American against the other during the 2016 campaign by manipulating social media. And they actually got into the campaign email system of the Democratic Party. An attack on one party should be an attack on all. The Russians are up to it again. And here's what I tell President Trump. Everything we've done with the Russians is not working. We need more sanctions, not less. More sanctions now. Now, before 2020, because clearly they don't have the message. I also want to ask you about some of the remarks you have made in the past, um, because we know as Democrats start talking about the details of the Mueller report, combing through it and already calling for impeachment proceedings mm -hmm. to begin against the president of the United States. Here's what you said um, back in January of 1999 when you were helping to lead the impeachment of President Clinton. The point I'm trying to make is you don't even have to be convicted of a crime to lose your job in this constitutional republic if this body determines that your conduct as a public official is clearly out of bounds in your role. Thank God you did that. Because impeachment is not about punishment. Impeachment is about cleansing the office. Impeachment is about restoring honor and integrity to the office. Do you agree? I was a lot younger. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like some of what you're characterizing here, saying everything in the Mueller report, it may not be great, but it doesn't reach the level of being able to well, prosecute. That's crime. different from what you described there, which was to say behavior of a president, sure it the does. cleansing of an office well, it, is it, important. It's got to be a high crime of misdemeanor not defined by uh, the prosecution team, but by a political body called the House of Representatives, approved by the Senate. So there was an article of impeachment against President Clinton for lying under oath about having sex with Monica Lewinsky. I voted against that because I believe a lot of people would lie to protect their family if they were blindsided about an affair. So I didn't want that to become a high crime or misdemeanor. What President Clinton did was interfere in a lawsuit against him by Paula Jones and others hide the evidence, encourage people to lie. So to me, he took the legal system and turned it upside down. But it doesn't have to technically be a crime. What President Trump did here was completely cooperate in an investigation, a million documents, let everybody that the special counsel wanted to talk to uh, be interviewed. Don McGahn was interviewed for 30 hours. I believe the president did nothing wrong. Whether you like him or not, I'll leave that up to you. But this is but a even the pressuring Don McGahn to see, fire that, the special okay, counsel. He may not gonna, have done if, it. If you're going to let that be the standard of impeachment, that you have an interaction between a White House counsel and a president that, that you find uncomfortable, then we'll have nobody serve. So here's the deal for me. You actually have to do something. Bill Clinton lost his law, uh, law license for five years because he did something. But to my Democratic friends, if you agree with the 1999 statement I made, you think this office needs to be cleansed, impeach him. It's up to you. If you think Donald Trump deserves to be impeached, then impeach him. I don't. 
Quickly, before you go, I want to ask you about your old friend, Joe Biden, yeah. former vice president, throwing his hat into the ring. President Trump seeming to suggest he's too old. What do you think? Well, yeah, that, that's uh, up to the voters to decide. I think uh, President Trump is very vibrant, and I know Joe, Joe Biden. If you travel with Joe Biden, you won't think he's too old. Here's the problem for Joe. Does he fit into the Democratic Party of... Uh, 2020. I don't know. He's a good man. I like him a lot. I disagree with him on, on policy. I hope he doesn't apologize for the life he's led because he's led a good life. But if he starts apologizing for all the policy positions and decisions he's made throughout his life, that will be disappointing. I don't know how he fits in this party, but I do know this. He's a good man and he would be a strong candidate. Senator Graham, thank you. Okay.